Hello everyone, this is Pino Trogli again, San Francisco State University. This is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And in this, um, I promise, short video, I will show how to uh, position the uh, inside pattern of our cube section project on the page. Okay, so the drawing, um, the drawing itself, uh, if you did a simpler section, it might look like this. And um, and it's the drawing itself is a documentation piece, but in fact, we can use something else to actually build a cube. Um, and this is derived from that master uh, template. Um, so I did two examples earlier, one where I showed the uh, simpler section and a more complicated section. And the simpler section was for, um, for this cube, right? So this is the section right here. And we cannot show everything on the page because there's just no room to show both a piece of the inside and a piece of the outside um, because eight, eight by 12 is not, uh, nine by 12 is not enough. So this was this cube. And then the second one was, um, was this cube, okay. Uh, let's see, yeah. So this is the section right here. And this is the section shown the actual cube. And this is how the internal part, when it's folded out, um, comes out to be. And we'll see how this is combining two separate triangles, these two separate triangles right here. Okay. So the question is how to position um, the shape in relation to the, um, to the outside. Okay. Uh, you can see here, it's only touching one point because there was no way to make a touch by an entire length. Uh, there would be an overlap, it wouldn't look so good. Uh, however, here we were able to do it. Uh, but the other trick is how do we position it so that the face of the cube is straight, right? So that this is nice and straight. And again, I'm, I'm only showing a piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to do that now. Uh, so I'll start with the simpler one. And I'll go through the steps of what we did to get there, right? So that this is already in other videos, kind of a little bit scattered, but hopefully by repetition, it becomes uh, more clear. It's always good to have your design handy, um, just to refer to it. So this is basically your initial sequence, right? Always very good to have it because trust me, you're gonna get, you're gonna get lost once in a while. Um, so we had that, we have that handy, which I just did on a piece of tracing paper. And then if you happen to do it by hand, uh, without the grid, it's the same thing, but I'm just going to work now from the grid that I provided. Okay. So that you, if you printed this again, they might not have been hundred percent four inches by four inches, but as long as you worked in combination, you would be fine. So I started out by drawing my section on my square and then using a compass, right? I moved these dimensions onto my, um, onto my so-called circular grid, which once again was uh, actually a contribution by a student. Um, the fact that we have the pre-drawn circles for all those distances um, to the center of the cube, if you recall, which is from drawing, I believe 18. Um, so we built this shape again by taking, we started out, for example, C to A. I pointed on anywhere on the C circle. I made a circle and I drew the first line and so forth and so on. Um, again, just review the other videos for this because it's shown you know, in real time, I guess. Now I'm just jumping ahead. Um, now, once we did that, here's a, a little bit of a hint in terms of how to make your shapes inside maybe a little optimized. And that is that if in the middle of your sequence, um, you have a line that goes straight across and this could be at an angle. Uh, we'll see later in the other design is at an angle, but here it's straight horizontally. That's a hint that these two parts, in other words, the two triangles there might, might combine to make a single shape. And that's exactly what happens here. So after I, after I resolved the first and the second triangle, C to A and A to E, C to A and A to E, 
and then I repeat it because, by the way, if you have enough room here, you can do as much as you can as you possibly can before you run out of paper. Um, so I covered this area, right? Basically. Um, but now I'm saying, oh, yeah, it looks like this might be combined. And of course, if I have the cube already built, I know that. <laughs> so you would discover this through the process. Um, but I'm just telling you it's because maybe you can figure it out before. Um, so what happens here is that, yeah, as I go around, eventually this triangle here meets the opposite triangle and they're all part of the same thing. So it just makes sense to make it all one big square. So how do we do that on our pattern is like this. This is the initial design. Since I know now that these two will be together, what I can do is I can steal one of them from one side, okay? And I bring it over to the other side. And I constructed this using the compass. Okay. So that's now my new shape. And I'm going to delete this line because that's gonna be a join. Now, it's not absolutely necessary that you do this. You could just be happy with this one. And, um, and in fact, that's what, let's see, that's what my drawing shows here, right? I mean, I didn't go through the trouble of showing that so-called op optimization, but if you do it, it's nice. Um, or you might not do it in that drawing, but maybe you do it in the actual construction. Anyway, that's how we did it. So we, we, moved, we moved one triangle over to the other side. Okay, and for that, I just simply use the compass, okay, using the same construction that I was using before. Now, at this point, it's a different shape, right? It looks a little funny because it's not asymmetrical anymore, but that's all right. But what I have now is basically a piece, it's, it's what I call my master or cookie cutter, okay? Now, from this, um, I'm going to need to make several in order to build my cube. So let's see now how we actually transfer this onto the page to make a, a coherent drawing. Um, what you need to do is you need to combine the shape. Okay, and now I'm, I'm just going to detach this. And you need to place it on your other drawing and see how they connect, right? And see what makes sense. So for example, I know that A and E connect to this line, right? So if I place it over that line, it doesn't look so great because if I'm gonna show this part, um, there is an overlap here. So do, could I do something else? Maybe could I do CA? Okay, let me try that. Now that connects, but now I have an overlap here. So I'm kind of stuck here really. And what I need to do is what I can do though is I can do that right so I show that it's attaching to one spot but at least as soon as I move this I know that line fits and then as, as I move this I know this line fits so it's coherent and it's the correct position and because I want to place this straight in my drawing what I could do now is well let me just see maybe I'll just tape this together um, that and now I'll go to my oops well I, I can't quite see it so perhaps let's do something else perhaps I can um, just trace that real quick again this is just layout right this is just presentation it's not making the actual cube um, but it makes your drawing uh, 19 nice and clean um, So tracing paper, you must have, right? If you haven't bought tracing paper yet, you're really, um, what should I say, being deprived. <laughs> it's, it's one of the best things around. It's like pizza or olive oil, or I don't know, pasta for me at least. You gotta have tracing paper. Otherwise you can't draw um, this kind of stuff. So, 
So now that I have this, I go to my, um, to my layout and I have a clean layout here. Um, literally, if you have actually done this nice and precise, what you can then do, where's my push pin? You can have a push pin. And once you locate this, right, you have to make sure that it fits. And here you want to cut it off, right? You just, just stop the drawing there. So now what I'll do is, okay, how do I position this? Maybe I can take my triangle and scotch tape is the other thing you cannot live without. Um, so in other words, don't place this like this, right? That's not nice. It should be straight. Um, it should be straight and to make it straight, now I'm just gonna be a little bit of a hack and just use my triangle here to get that line to be straight. Um, now I can take my scotch tape again. I tape it to my drawing just for a moment, not too hard. And then I use my, um, my push pin and I just transfer the drawing, okay? Because again, we're just doing this for representation purposes. Well, documentation, so I should say, documentation purpose. Um, and when you have that, now here, I'm gonna do at least maybe a dot there so that I know what I need. And if I, I'm not sure if I got them all, this is what I do. I just quickly do this. Okay, grab them all, I can't quite see. So maybe I'll do them a little harder, okay? So that looks better. And so this is, this is good, this is acceptable and I can now darken it, okay? And I'm just gonna do it, uh, even though I know that later I'm gonna need the same clean sheet to, um, to show the other more complicated design. And here, if you wanna be fancy, you can like fade the line to show that it's continuing. Um, okay. Oops, is that right? Something funny there. Oh yeah, it's correct. Um, so I'm just gonna do it a little quick now. If you did this really, really super precise, you could also use this as your master to build your cube. But I recommend that actually you just keep this as a drawing and do the master separately now, which I'll show in another quick video in a moment, okay? Um, so. Oops. Now, the one thing that this drawing is not showing is the continuation of the cube, right? If you recall, um, oops. on this drawing, what I did was I show a little bit more of it to give a sense of what the cube looks like. So that's a nice way to, to show it. Um, okay, so that's the first one. And uh, again, Check the next video because I'm going to show now how with that information you can um, with this information that we just did, you can then build another piece, which then becomes your master and then from here you're going to cut all the parts okay but I'm going to do that later. Um, so now let me just quickly do the second one. I'm going to put this together, back together. Um, let's see, where were we? Yeah, we were here. Okay, so tracing paper really is just an amazing um, invention. Well, paper period is an amazing invention. Um, so I'll keep this all together. And I'll do the second one. I lost my little triangle, which was here. I'm not sure if you're hearing the noises from the alley. Um, seems very lively today, but. Okay, so that's one group. So let me, let me now show how, um, the more complicated, well, if it did a four by four grid, although there were a couple of cases in the two by two grid that actually were 
um, were not as simple <laughs> as I thought they would be. Um, so I'll just take a piece of white paper that I'm going to put here. Let's see. Okay, this is just to cover up the other drawing. Not quite. A little bit more. So, um, okay. Have a clean. Just imagine that that's a clean sheet. Okay. All right. So the next one was a little bit more elaborate. Um, and no, this was the other one. Yeah, and this was the section, right? So if you recall, we had, um, yeah, if you looked at my sequence example, this was the section. So I went from C to B to X to C, right? And once again, all the letters are here in page one of this um, of this end out of this template. And so you should always, you know, make sure that you're using the correct letters. Um, so once again, we had, we had all the other videos showing how to construct the uh, shape from here to here. Or did I do it the other way? I can't remember now. Um, so I'm not gonna repeat that now, but look at the other videos. Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna get our shape once we, and by the way, when you do this, ideally you really want to test it. You really want to, um, because we don't know, right? If it's correct or not until you actually build it. So what I recommend is that you, um, this was the cube, right? Yeah, this is the cube. So what I recommend is that from this drawing, okay, from this drawing, you cut yourselves with, you know, the push pin, transfer it, cut them at least two faces, right? Let's say the left and the right, and at least the bottom so that you can glue them, you know, tape them together. And then once you have that shape, you tested it to see how it works. And of course, what I just said is the description of the next video about how to do the rough cube. So, um, it's a little bit of back and forth, right? You may realize that after you do this, like, whoops, it wasn't right. I have to fix it because it doesn't work when I actually built it um, in the real world. Um, but he, yeah, here's an example of what I did, right? I just tested it. And this is actually scotch tape. It's exactly my shape. It's already optimized. Um, so, but let's, let's see how we can now get this guy on the page the same way. It's the same process, right? So once we, um, now notice that again, I'm using my little, what I call my little storyboard, right? You really have to have something like this because it's so easy to get uh, turned, right? I'm not showing the full squares here. Um, and it's always good to, count your first section as kind of your beginning point, your starting point, because you could say that all these designs are different, right? And they really are different if you just look at them this way, but they're really the same, either reflected or rotated. Um, but having that as your starting point is very crucial. So um, once again, I did the same thing. I took my two printouts and using the compass, I said, okay, where do I start? Uh, I started from C to B, All right? So I took any point on my C circle, I marked it up, I connected it, and then I just kept going, right? And once I got to C, which was the end of here, I uh, realized, well, I actually have room to do the same going in reverse, right? So if you can see, here, 
again imagine this is not there yet one two three one two three one two and three and then four five and now it's missing because here i stole it before so once i finish that i can already tell that there's no way i'm going to be able to finish the whole cube because i'm going to run out of paper right so you have to have some joints at some point um, anyway that's my master design and again because i kind of know from experience and but i'm telling you I know that because my design has this line that here connects in a straight line as it wraps around the corner, I kind of know that those two triangles are going to be part of the same um, part of the same um, surface. Okay, this is a nicer model, uh, and and interesting enough in this particular cube, they're actually part of an hexagon. I don't know if you can see it, but. Um, it forms a perfect hexagon. So in other words, you can slice the cube into two parts using an hexagon. So this would be the other edge and the other edges here, you can't see it. Um, so because I know that those continue, I'm gonna do the same trick that I did before. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna steal one triangle here and I'm gonna bring it over to the other side. And to do that, I use the compass, but I'm showing you how the process works. So in other words, this edge is going to connect there, right? And to show it again on the on the cube, it just means this edge right here. And I don't know if you can see it, but in this model by a student, um, this was in fact a joint, but that's what I'm saying. Let's eliminate that joint. It's gonna be much nicer if this is one big surface um, like this one, right? much much cleaner without that without that joint so once i determined that that was correct that i brought it over i redrew it on another piece of trace eliminating that joint okay and once i had that now now let's let's transfer and let's do exactly what we did before so i'm going to move this and i'm going to um Try to put it on my design and see how some of these triangles, at least one, connects to the. Uh, uh, and I look at the letters and I say, okay, B to X. So, for example, B to X. If I position it like this, I know that I have an overlap here. So that's not going to work. Uh, what about C to X? Again, I have overlap. So, but notice that they would be still in the right spot. If I do this here, I can see that, whoops, actually that is wrong. <laughs> Wait a minute, okay. Um, yeah, if I pivot on X here, you can see the B then fits. So repeating the process, uh, what I'm gonna do is try one more thing and that's C to B and it, and it looks like it fits. So now here, I don't have enough tracing paper, so maybe but if I steal a piece from this, I'll do just that. Um, uh, mind you, I could still show this, you know, just by one corner, but because I do have the, you know, the, the possibility of, in other words, I could show it also dangling by one dot right there and it would still be the correct position because if I turn it, it still all fits. But since I, since I can attach it without overlaps, I am going to do so, okay? Um, so I'm gonna quickly resketch. Again, this is not gonna fit, so I'm gonna fade out my design. And it's a good idea actually to write the letters on this drawing because it, it keeps again things things in order, right? Oops, this is moving. Oops, okay. So that's it. So now what what I'll do is I'll transfer these to my um, to my pre-drawn 
pre-dawn page. And you can see things are getting even tighter here, right? So, but this is good. This is actually, again, I wouldn't put it like this because then my, my cube, right? My side of the cube would be sideways. So I want to keep that straight. Again, I'm going to do a little trick here so that I, um, let's see. Yeah, I just, I just use, uh, I just use my triangle too. And again, it's a representation drawing. I mean, you don't have to use this to build it. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a thousand percent, but 99.5% is pretty good. Um, yeah, you can see on my example that I posted on iLearn that I also continued it to show again how the cube continues and it's all cut off because it doesn't quite fit. Okay, so repeat the process now with the push pin real quick. And you just saw this earlier, so there isn't really much to it. Um, This is a trick that my professor, my teacher, Giorgio Scarpa, who is basically the initiator of all these um, exercises and projects uh, taught me when I was in, yeah, in high school. So again, I double check to make sure I got them all. Yep, I do. And sometimes, well, sometimes I make a little circle, but I think they're clear enough now. So I'm just going to quickly, um, By now, you probably all should be familiar with your own design, so you should should be able to replicate fairly fast or recognize what the dots are, right? Um, yeah. So while I draw these, I'll just say that in the next video where I show how to actually build a rough cube, what we'll be doing is we just repeat this transfer from your um, circular grid template um, onto a nice board. It needs to be a nice board because you're gonna use it over and over. And, uh, and that becomes your, what I call it, yeah, the cookie cutter, the master cookie cutter. Um, I think this is right. So, oops, let's see rushing a little too much here. And when you build your cube, um, I think it's nice if you use like different color papers, if you have some, um, you know, like construction paper, although construction paper is a little thick. Um, now, I don't have my lines, unfortunately. So what I could do is use two triangles here. Just line it up and do that and do this, okay? Now I know in my design that is, you know, it looks like that so I could if I wanted to be fancy, I could, not fancy, but maybe I'll just fade it a little bit here. Um, and this line continues. This is the beginning of my sequence. This is how it um, it meets up at the other end that way because, um, so what happens is this is the beginning right here. But then when it goes all around, it ends up being here. So, so that's why this point is actually here at the kind of at the round trip, at the end of the round trip. So to make this yeah look more like a, the real thing, what I could do is, even if I don't know what the whole thing looks like, I can just fade it like that. Okay. And I'm just going to add the letters, so. Oh yeah, I noticed actually that my original drawing in Ireland is actually different. I didn't go, I didn't show that extra step to make it look, to make the final cube look nicer. So either way, either like this or either like this, your cube maybe doesn't have this situation where you combine triangles to make one big 
uh, diamond. Okay, it could be that that's not the case. So, so don't worry about it. Um, so I'll just so this would be B X. And by the way, if you're wondering why X is X, is because it was a point that at first I was not letting students use um, for I mean, various reasons, but then of course they did. And so I said, what the heck, why don't we just use it? <laughs> um, but I'd already gone through A, B, C, D, E. And so I was stuck with having to reinsert X, something else in between. Okay. So that's it. So now in the next video, what I'll do, I will show how to make uh, from the, um, from this template, right? how to make yet another master so that then that master becomes your true, um, yeah, cookie cutter. From these, now we make copies over and over, as many as you need, okay? So, but we're done now with this particular video. All right, thanks. I'll see you in the next video.